Basi, thanks so much for having me on. It's great to talk about this with you. Um, it's been going on for decades. It's the feminization of men. Um, they don't want men to be strong. They don't want men to be powerful. We keep hearing strong women, but we never hear about strong men. What we hear about is toxic masculinity. And I agree with Jordan Peterson. I think the, the term toxic masculinity is so dangerous. It's so insulting. What are young boys supposed to hear when they hear the term toxic masculinity? There's no empowerment about how to be a man, how to be um, a better to individual. Um, a lot of traits that um, young boys have, whether it's um, competition, aggression, nobody's teaching these kids, these young boys, how to um, nurture that and how to direct that in a healthy way. Instead, we have these femme-centric systems whereby, you know, we have more female teachers and femme-centric systems overall, which are basically telling these young boys that that's bad. How dare you be competitive? How, be how dare you be aggressive? But actually, as Jordan Peterson says, I think as a man, you need to be a monster, but in a good way, in a way whereby you're channeling that in a healthy way. So um, like you do um, and like many of other GB, New present GB News presenters do, when they spot the tyranny, when they uh, when they spot um, not informed consent when it comes to pregnant women being um, told to take vaccines, they stand up and they say, hang on, that isn't correct. This is what I mean. Channeling that that competition, that anger, that that focus rather than being um, feminized yeah. and told to be a bit because more compliant. Because presumably, Leia, uh, feminized men are much easier to lock down, much easier to told uh, that they can't drive a car, that they can't eat meat anymore, that they can't go on a family holiday, which is what the globalists want ordinary folk to sign up to. Absolutely. I mean, the war on meat is an incredible example where they're trying to make us eat bugs. Why? Because <laughs> meat literally makes you big and strong. What happens when you're physically big and strong? Mentally, you feel better. You're able to think critically. You're able to be mentally resilient when they tell you that you can't travel unless you take some kind of medicine. When you're strong, <laughs> you're able to resist that better. And, you know, even the whole narrative when it comes to the uh, gym bros, you know, um, they say guys that go to the gym, there are so many media headlines like the guardian that say men that hit the gym um they call them right wing alt right no they're not i know plenty of incredible men that go to the gym and are very kind very charitable very entrepreneurial um you know elon musk as well i think is a fantastic example of this because he's somebody who's incredibly entrepreneurial he's totally left the matrix if you like he's built n numerous businesses he has multiple women multiple children um and the system hate him in a America, they absolutely hate him and he has paid the most taxes that any person has ever paid and yet they still hate Elon Musk. Why? Because he's showing you that you don't have to do the nine to five. He's pulling people. Well, he's, he's an inspiration. He's an inspiration that, you know, you don't have to be part of the matrix. And so it's really important, isn't it, Leia, that men should no longer feel guilty for embracing a more traditional role. Absolutely. It actually breaks my heart to see men feel guilty about wanting to hold the door for a woman, wanting to pay for a woman, um, you know, wanting yeah. to protect and provide for her. Um, I think as well, a lot of the issues with these, um, there's a lot of gender dynamic issues right now. And it's because men don't want to insult women by um, by helping her. God forbid you mansplain to her. It's OK. You're as a woman. Yes, you're allowed to teach me something. I'm going to listen. And that's OK. I'm not going to shout at you. Um, and so because we have less, let's say, masculine men, the women become more masculine in order to fill that void. And I think it really breaks down the relationships between men and women. Men want feminine women, women want masculine men. And when you don't have those dynamics um, in harmony, we're starting to um, to sort of cross and we end up having some kind of gender neutral situation. Oh, yeah. um, and I 100 percent think that that is uh, a World Economic Forum agenda. 100 percent, because like I said in that video, it's the men that go to war. It's the men that fight yep. the tyranny. Um, and I actually just tweeted this. If you have a society of weak women, OK, fine. But if you have a society of weak men, we are in trouble. And that is cat catastrophic. No, I think you're completely right about the World Economic Forum. It's so fascinating, isn't it, that the MSM talk all the time about the term toxic masculinity. Uh, but they never speak of some of the consequences of toxic feminism, which, for example, is trying to erase female sport. I mean, come on, if you're going to talk about toxic masculinity, you've got to look at the other side of the coin, too. 
Absolutely. I mean, feminism has gone way too far. Like I believe in individual empowerment as a woman. I have a career because I know I need to be financially secure, but that is it. That is where my feminism starts and ends because feminism has gone way too far. Absolutely. They're trying to erase what it means to be a woman as a woman that insults me. I'm offended. I'm not a cis woman. I'm just a woman. (laughs) Um, And if if they can choose their labels, don't don't pick my labels, you know. Um, And so absolutely toxic femininity has gone way too far. They don't talk about that because we live in um, a matriarchy, in my opinion, not a patriarchy anymore. Um, and so it, it's gone way too far. And God forbid we actually were rude to women. That would that would be very offensive.